Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Kirill Ermenko from Super Data Science and I'm super excited because today we're going to look at five cool use cases of ChatGPT for data science and machine learning. Uh, the use cases are here in front of the screen and we'll jump into the first one just now, but I wanted to also say that if you'd like to jump to a specific use case, then check out the chapters in the progress bar of the video and you can fast forward straight to the one that you're interested in. And we're gonna kick things off with use case number one, Python library suggestions. Let's have a look. So here's ChatGPT. By the way, if you don't know uh, where to find it, just go to chat.openai.com and you'll be able to sign up here and then log in. Uh, and then once you're logged in, you'll be uh, welcomed by a screen like this. So let's say we need to scrape some data from a website and we don't really know which library to use. Then we can say, please suggest the best uh, Python libraries uh, for web uh, scraping uh, data. And let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. So there are several libraries that are commonly used for web scraping uh, in Python, including Beautiful Soup. That's quite a popular library indeed for web scraping. Then we've got Scrapy. And notice how it's adding information about each one of these. So you can read a bit about it and decide. And you can always ask for more information on a specific one, but this is already a little intro. Selenium, also a very uh, well-known tool, indeed a powerful tool. Uh, requests, um, another tool, IXML, and just keeps on going and giving you more and more to look into. Um, if you would like to, for example, compare two of them, you could ask for that. You could say, please compare beautiful soup versus selenium or something like that. If you'd like more options, you could ask for more options. You could ask for sample code, but we will get to coding in a second. Let's ask for another suggestion. Let's say we want to uh, now visualize our data and we want to know what about the best libraries uh, for visualization. Let's ask that question and what you will notice here is that I didn't specify that the libraries I'm looking for are in Python. Actually, uh, ChatGPT can, uh, well, it remembers the conversation. So it's like we're having a conversation. So it assumes that we also want the libraries in the same language as we were discussing before, which is Python. So it automatically generates the answer for Python. And here we've got matplotlib, uh, Seaborn, which are famous, of course, Plotly, Bokeh, and uh, even ggplot, which is actually an R library. And I didn't even know um, that it's available in Python, but you can see here it is a plotting system for Python based on the grammar of graphics, which is inspired by the interface of ggplot2, which is the library for R. And now it looks like there's a Python version as well. So you can learn some new things as well. And if you like more or less, you can ask for more options. So we go, that's how we ask for suggestions uh, of libraries. And this can be very powerful when you're facing a data science or machine learning challenge that you haven't faced before. And rather than going and searching for these libraries, you can get some answers on what you might want to look into. All right, use case number two, code troubleshooting. So we're gonna start a new chat with ChatGPT. And here I have some code about um, building K-means clustering. This is from one of our courses. and uh, here I have an interesting uh, piece of code which creates the chart to uh, use to analyze the well, apply the elbow method to understand how many clusters we want to have. So let's, uh, as you can see, it's working here. Let's make intentionally let's put an error in this code and see if ChatGPT can pick it up. So let's say we instead of inertia, which um, uh, is you know like when we were typing up, we might have made an error, might have said in our inertia underscore, we said inertia or uh, inertia, something like that, without the underscore. Let's see if ChatGPT can find this error. So we'll say something like, uh, could you please uh, find and correct the error in this code? And let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. And that's quite a hard error to find because um, it's inside uh, you know, the method and you got to know what we're applying, what kind of parameter we're uh, passing on here and says, instead of inertia, it should be inertia. Uh, and the correct code would look like this. Let's see if it finds that the underscore is required. Yep, it can find, it found that not just the spelling is incorrect, but the underscore is required. So as you can see, uh, we quite easily were able to find the error. And in another tip for you, for when you're looking for mistakes, 
or trying to get uh, ChatGPT correct your code is if you run the code and you do get an error and ChatGPT doesn't find it from the first time, uh, you can, which happens sometimes, you can actually co copy the error code that you're getting uh, from your IDE. Um, and in this case, I'm using Google Colab. Um, you can use, uh, you can just copy the error code into ChatGPT uh, and say, I am getting the following error. And then uh, it will be able to analyze that as well. So first it will look at your code, then you can add this additional information and um, it will give you, it will help it find the actual problems. Um, so here it's actually explaining, as previously, no <laughs> as previously noted, it's insisting that it um, gave you the correct, gave us the correct answer. So there we go. That's how ChatGPT can be very helpful with finding errors. Uh, be careful. Sometimes it doesn't um, find all the errors. Of course, it uh, might uh, not uh, be able to understand exactly your intentions with the code, but syntax errors and things like this, uh, it's pretty good at. So there we go. That's how ChatGPT can help you uh, correct your code. Okay, now use case number three, code generation. All right, so let's have a look. Let's say uh, we want to create a logistic regression model and we're uh, too lazy to write the code ourselves. So we can use ChatGPT for this and I have a little prompt prepared. Um, it's gonna say, I have a data set named data.csv with the dependent variable in the last column and an index in the first column. Can you please write a Python code that builds a logistic regression model and trains it on this data set? Also, please return the accuracy at the end. Let's have a look what happens. So there we go. Sure, here's a sample code in Python that implements logistic regression on a data set. And as you can see, it's already importing all the necessary uh, libraries, even the one that we'll use at the end for uh, calculating the accuracy. Uh, it's adding comments to the code, data, uh, it's reading the data here. It's, it's even, it even knows that you need to split the data into the training uh, set and the test set. As you can see, it's very important that we specified that our uh, dependent variable is in the last column and index is in the first column because that uh, helps ChatGPT understand that for the X values, it should ignore the first column because that's an index, it's not a predictor variable and it should ignore the last column because that's where the uh, dependent variable is and that's where it gets it from. Um, and it's uh, like, imagine like understanding, it understands that from normal human language that uh, it needs to avoid these col these columns. It already knows things about like that about index and um, the dependent variable column. Then it's splitting the uh, data into a training and test set. Uh, it's using a 20% ratio for the test set size, which makes sense. Train the logistic uh, regression model, use the train model to make prediction on the test data, and then calculate the accuracy uh, using our uh, test uh, the actuals for uh, the test and the predicted values for the test data and get the accuracy. Uh, and then gives us a note, note that the accuracy might not be very high and you might need to perform feature engineering to try different algorithms to get better results. Very interesting. As you can imagine, a ChatGPT, this uh, over here is not an IDE. We cannot just run the code here. We cannot upload the data set or anything like that. So we're going to take this uh, code and we're going to copy it over. So we're going to create a new a uh, new notebook over here. Give it a few seconds to load. All right, and then I'm gonna connect it over here. Uh, so we have a runtime available to us. And while it's connecting, we're going to open this up so we can uh, drag our um, file here into uh, the data file. So, okay, it looks like it's connecting. I'm also gonna copy the code over here. There's the code from ChatGPT. And I'm gonna take the data that I have available um, in another folder, there's my data.csv. Um, okay, so let's open up the data set before we run this. Um, this is what our data set looks like. Here we've got uh, samples, sample numbers. So this is a medical data set. We're looking at a tumor prediction or cancer prediction. Um, and here we've got just the index, which is not a predictor variable. Then we've got our predictable predictor variables. And at the end, we've got a class. So a two means that a person doesn't have cancer and a four uh, means that that person does have cancer. Uh, so that's our dependent variable. So that's our data set. Let's see how this code runs with this data set. As you can see, we didn't have to change anything in the code. We just 
added the data set it's already even coded into here and there we go the model has been created with an accuracy of 0 0.95 so 95 almost 96 percent and everything it's written makes total sense so there we go that's how you can create a uh, logistic regression using just chat gpt and a simple natural language text prompt all right off to now we're going off to use case number four converting r and python code so let's say you're working on a project and um, there is already code or somebody's created some code before you you're taking over a project or you found a useful piece of code somewhere online which you would like to apply in your project but it's written in r or in another programming language python uh, chat gpt can work with various programming languages including java and c sharp and others so let's say there's already some code and you want to use it but you need it in python um, so let's have a look at how this could work uh, here we have a, a data set or uh, this is actually uh, university of cincinnati and here we have some uh, code in r so they're creating some uh, visualizations of this uh, quite well-known uh, data set empty cars and some other ones so we're going to take some code from here and we're going to see if we can recreate it in uh, in python by just using uh, the uh, chat gpt <laughs> so we're going to say we're going to take this code from here uh, and then we're going to start a new prompt with chat gpt we'll say uh, please convert the following code of, uh, into python we won't even tell it what language it is uh, originally in so we say that's importing the data set uh, then we're going to import the uh, library in this case or package in this case ggplot2 uh, and then we're going to say we need a scatter plot so we just put this code together this is all one code uh, to create uh, this scatter plot let's see if chat gpt can convert this into python so let's see what happens here's equivalent code in python using matplotlib library so it already knows that for visualization we can't use ggplot2 we need to use something else in python matplotlib and it's also importing pandas so we can use with the data we can work with the data frame uh, empty cars look at this it's not uh, just uh, saying empty cars like you know you need to upload the data set it's actually giving us a link uh, to empty cars um, that it can uh, that we can work with so it found this data set online we can even ask it uh, could you please explain the url in the code what where did this come from and then it's doing the plotting of course over here so sure the url uh, and so on is a direct link to a publicly available data set of motor car specification called empty cars this data set is hosted on the github repository our data sets by vincent Arrell bundock the pd read csv function from pandas yes 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 uh by loading the data this can okay so basically it's just making it convenient for us to work with the data set we don't have to load up so let's see what happens we don't even need to load a data set let's see if this is going to work uh we're going to create a new notebook again we'll connect it up and we'll paste our code in here and let's have a look what happens once we're connected we can uh, run this code and we don't need to upload any data sets because it's taking data sets straight from this link so let's have a look play um okay so everything looks good except for the lines we've got uh, a line uh, connecting all our dots uh, let's ask it to remove the line remove the line uh, from the chart leave only a scatter plot so let's have a look sure here's the updated code and like you can instead of like writing and correcting and modifying your code yourself you can just give it these prompts and it will keep uh, generating the new code the only um, issue i find is that it takes a bit of time like to rewrite all of this code rather than you know like just going and updating one line uh, it's rewriting all this code uh this code the pl plot function has been replaced with the pl scatter uh, function plt scatter function uh yep this let's see if that's what we need so we'll replace this and rerun it and voila does this look like what we were after that's what we were after or that's what we were after and as you can see uh it's exactly what we were after and we didn't even need to it even gave us a shortcut gave us this data set so we go that's how we can convert uh from 
uh, R or other programming language to Python. And of course, you can convert the other way around. You can take Python code and convert it to R or Java or C Sharp or uh, other programming language. You might need to make small modifications like we did in that case. So always check. Uh, it's not a bulletproof system, but it can help a lot. Okay. And finally, use case number five, article summary. All right, so I have an article here, um, which was recently published. Let me see, no, where is that article here? So we're gonna open up a new article from Quant Magazine. Um, and this one is about, uh, it's titled, Researchers Discover a More Flexible Approach to Machine Learning. And uh, it talks about some liquid neural nets and so on. So we're not going to give ChatGPT this summary over here. We'll just give it the full article because let's say we don't have time to read all of this. Uh, because as a data scientist or machine learning engineer or expert, you need to be on top of trends. You need to be know what's happening to be uh, agile and learn the, the right things and have the uh, right conversations or good conversations with people. And you might be interested in a lot of these things. So sometimes you have time to read them. Sometimes you don't. There's a lot of things happening. So if you don't have time to read this, uh, just go to ChatGPT and say, uh, please summarize this article. Um, there we go. And then just uh, shift enter, paste the article. So as you can see, it's, we're pasting this massive article over here. Um, and let's see, I even forgot, I didn't even paste the, the A at the beginning. So let's see what happens. So it's summarizing it in a um, paragraph. MIT researchers have developed a, a new type of uh, network called liquid neural nets, but even this might be a bit too much for us to read or like might be inconvenient. Let's say summarize it in five bullet points instead. Um, and let's see what happens then just gives us the five bullet points. Artificial intelligence researchers have made significant progress with traditional neural networks, but they still remain in, uh, relatively inflexible. In 2020, researchers in MIT introduced a new kind of network called liquid neural nets inspired by the roundworm. Uh, liquid neural nets use equations to predict the behavior of each neuron over time uh, and solve a set of linked equations. Liquid, you get the point. Like it, it uh, basically summarized all that massive article for us in five bullet points, which we can read in the matter of 30 seconds. And if this is something that's of interest to us, then we can go read it further. Uh, if we want more, uh, a more elaborated summary on specific part of this, we can ask uh, ChatGPT. And moreover, we can ask for other existing information, uh, previously existing information on this same topic. We can say, oh, can you tell me uh, when or who first uh, came up with liquid neural nets and so on. So there we go. That's uh, how we can use ChatGPT to summarize an article. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy analyzing.